to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Is there a biblical basis for the study of Satan? Is there a biblical basis for the study of demons and their operations? Is there a biblical basis for the study of deliverance? Should the believer study the subject of deliverance? Why do we need to study deliverance? At least we know for a shorty that Jesus died, he defeated Satan. He said it is finished. We know that today he's seated at the right hand of the Father. We know he has given us the victory. Why then? Do we have to study Satan? Why then do we have to study demons? Why then do we have to study the operations of the satanic kingdom? Why do we have to study the subject of deliverance? Is there a biblical basis? Now please look up. Let me teach you how, how to extract the thoughts of God in scripture. Anything is qualified to be a doctrine. I have taught you about doctrines the word doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means a predefined body of knowledge that is intended to make a student become something exact doctrine are we together and that believers mature in this kingdom through the sound exegesis of doctrine every time doctrine is communicated is able to empower the believers to be people of stature and maturity anything is qualified to be a doctrine if it passes these three tests never forget this anything that cannot pass these three tests is not qualified to be called doctrine number one that subject matter or that thought must be captured in the old testament it must be a subject that was captured in the old testament that means you must be able to find scriptural references where that subject matter was discussed and engaged in the old testament test number two jesus in his earth work must have taught that subject or acted in keeping with that subject so the first test is the test of that subject being taught or uh, engaged in the old testament and then it must be seen in the earth work and the life and ministry of jesus christ number three that subject or that thought line must be captured in the teachings of the apostles and the early church so any teaching that was not captured in the old testament any teaching that was not captured in the life of jesus who midwife the old and the new any teaching that was not captured in the life of the early church and the apostles does not qualify to be doctrine. It can be an, a supporting opinion that a prophet had. Are we together now? So we can have the authority to deal with a subject using a doctrinal stance if we can find that subject taught or references made to that subject or that thought line. In the old testament it must be a subject that jesus spoke about and it must be a subject that we saw discussed in the life of the apostles and the early church so let's look at the subject of satan demons and their operation from the old testament i'll be giving you a few references remember what we are doing we are establishing the biblical basis for discussing this so that your heart will be open because some of us respectfully speaking we have come through the journey of different christian 
um, organizations we've sat under different well-intentioned well-meaning men and women of God across the globe and sometimes when you hear teachings like this uh, what is coming there will be that fight your loyalty to what you have known before now your loyalty to what your man of God or whoever it is that mentored you spiritually you can feel listening to a message like this is a betrayal to your loyalty to a message that has been taught you and so I'm using the Bible so that your heart will be open to now learn doctrine are we ready in the Old Testament the first idea of Satan the first idea of the operation of evil was revealed in what we call the fall of man Genesis chapter 3 and Genesis chapter 4 please write it down for reference the fall of man the Bible tells us that Satan was absolutely responsible for the fall of man you find that in Genesis chapter 3 and Genesis chapter 4 there are many stories in the Old Testament but because the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses a matter is established I will just use two or three references and then that would suffice for this discussion so the first capture of the reality of darkness evil Satan and a discussion that related to that in fact according to scripture it was not only adam that had a discussion with satan even god had a discussion with satan is that true genesis chapter 3 and genesis chapter 4. the second story very quickly captured from the old testament as we see is the story of job now classically speaking in theology the story of job is believed to be um the most the greatest expression of the operation of satan and darkness over man because when you read the entire 42 chapters of job the most important in my opinion of the 42 chapters is chapters 1 and 2 and then chapters 42 chapters 1 and 2 talks about the two levels of his test is that true the test on his wealth and his children then chapter 2 the test on his health and then chapter 42 we see that it was the restoration of Job every other thing that happened in between Elihu the story all of that is important the reason why I'm putting it before others is I know that the book of Job from a chronological arrangement of scripture in as much as we know comes before Psalms but um, if the Bible were to be arranged properly from its, its chrono chronologically, the book of Job is believed to be somewhere in between Genesis and Exodus. Are we together? I hope you know that the arrangement of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation as we know now is not accurate in terms of its chronological arrangement. Nothing is exactly wrong with it, but in terms of its chronology means as the events occurred. Sometimes when you need to go into the deeper layer of Bible study, you will have to arrange the Bible chronologically to now make sense as you explore. In fact, it is one of the ways we study scripture. Maybe one day we'll discuss it here, how to study the Bible. There are many templates for studying the Bible. Number one, you can study the Bible according to the various books. And the Bible is classified according to various books. Number one, there is a Torah or the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses. Are we together? And then there is what is called the poetic books. All of the books that have to do with poetic descriptions, Ecclesiastes, you know, Proverbs, and all of that. And then we have what we call the prophets, the major and the minor prophets. Are we together? And then we have um, what we call the gospels, the four books that represent the gospel. We have the book of Acts. We have the epistles. Then we have Revelation. We also have Judges and all of these, all the other books that, the, that, that chronicle the events of kings, beginning from King Saul. Because it was not God's desire that men would have an earthly king. He wanted to be king directly over them. But because of their desire wanting a king, God used Samuel to anoint Saul. And then you have lots of other kings that ruled Israel. Josiah, 
and Joash being the youngest. Josiah ruled at age nine, Joash ruled at age eight. We have a lot of other people like that. So when you read the Bible, you can study the Bible based on these books. You can also study the Bible topically. Are we still learning? There is the topical study of the Bible. That means you can pick faith and study. You can pick the ministry of Jesus and study. You can pick the fruit of the Spirit. In fact, it's, it's the topical study of the Bible has proven to be the most effective. The reason is because it addresses the issue of your concern immediately. If you study the subject of faith and you gain understanding, you can begin to see the results immediately. And it will serve as a motivation and a consolation then there is the chronological study of bible the word chronos just means the passage of time the arrangement of the chapters and the verses and the books according to the time they occurred hallelujah so back to our discussion we're examining the biblical basis for the study of satan demons and their operations and we said the old testament has number one the fall of man seen in genesis chapter 3 and verse 4 and then number two the story of job the entire book of job but more specifically job chapter 1 chapter 2 and 42 chapter 1 and chapter 2 archives the events that happened to job we don't have the time we would have gone through it but Job was a man, the Bible records, that he feared God and eschewed evil. And one day there was a gathering before the Lord. We're going to deal with that because, you see, this subject has a lot of schools of thoughts and controversial angles to it. For instance, when you read the book of Job, you will see that as at the time the sons of God went to see God, the Bible says Satan was in their midst. It already uses that name, Satan, for him, meaning he had fallen. He was never called Satan in his glorified state his name was lucifer and yet the bible says in the judgment of satan there was no more found a place for him in heaven so you see this already brings controversy as there are schools of thought that believe that satan still has access to heaven and access to the presence of god till today and yet others use revelation chapter 12 to say no way the bible says there is no place found for him so let me say it up front that the discourse about the entire subject of demonology is not to create arguments but to be able to filter the factors that are useful to guide our understanding are we together we are not in a theological argument my assignment is to filter the parts that i believe is necessary for our understanding and then we'll fire on from there if you're with me say amen, amen. so we see the story of job number three the third story in the Bible that talks about deliverance, of course, is the story of Israel and their captivity in Egypt. Nothing is more classic than that. Israel and their captivity and the deliverance that happened for them. Now, if you really want to study the, the context of deliverance, as it were, the deliverance of the nation of Israel, here's how you... You have to study from Genesis chapter 4 to Genesis chapter 10. It will give you, sorry, I, did I say Genesis? Exodus, Exodus, please. Exodus chapter 4 to Exodus. No, you don't have to put it, media. I'm just giving them Exodus chapter 4 down to Exodus chapter 10. It archives the entire journey. That's where you record the 10 plagues, remember? All the plagues because Moses departs from the presence of God and he goes to Pharaoh and now he keeps returning bringing one plague after the other but then when you want to study the story of the deliverance out of Egypt you begin your study from Genesis 13 verse 17 Genesis 13 verse 17 down to Genesis 14 verse 31 Genesis 13 verse 17 down to Genesis 14 verse 31 gives you the complete story of the deliverance from Egypt and ends with the Red Sea hallelujah so from the Old Testament we see that the subject of Satan and evil and the deliverances that follow was not hidden the fall of man we see Satan there 
the story of job we see satan there and then we see deliverance and israel and their captivity now let's go to the life and ministry of jesus quickly so we have passed test one based on the doctrinal requirements to be able to study and teach any subject from a doctrinal standpoint we see that in the old testament now in the life of jesus is there anything that relates to satan relates to his works and relates to the subject of deliverance number one the temptation of jesus the very i can i can list almost everything there but then just for reference the temptation of jesus we find that in luke chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3 please give it to us luke chapter 4 1 to 3 then write 16 to 22 luke chapter 4 1 to 3 then 16 to 22 let me just read 1 to 3 the bible says and jesus being full of the holy ghost returned from jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness we are reading to verse 3 being 40 days tempted of who 40 days jesus tempted of the devil and the bible says in those days he did eat nothing and when the days were ended he was afterwards hungered verse 3 and the devil said to him if thou be the son of god command this stone that it be made bread let's read verse 4 and jesus answered him who did he answer and said it is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god so you read that and you find out that satan came to jesus and he came to carry out his ministry of deception his ministry of destruction and jesus did not ignore satan if jesus did not ignore satan we shouldn't ignore him jesus would have said satan i don't have any business i am the word of god let me focus on my father's agenda jesus turned to satan and spoke to him he said it is written number two jesus himself taught deliverance matthew chapter 12 please jesus taught among the many teachings matthew chapter 12 let's begin from verse 43 for sake of time here's what jesus taught jesus himself taught about satan and the fact that there was something about satan he wanted us to know he said when the when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none who is giving us this information jesus next verse then he saith i will return into my house from whence i came out and when he is come he findeth it empty swept and garnished next verse the bible says then goeth he and taketh with him seven other spirits more that means there is a structure jesus is the one showing us that all spirits are not the same jesus uses the expression more wicked that other spirits are more wicked seven others more wicked than himself and the bible says they come together as a team and they enter and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first look up so when a man's later state is worse than the first what is the diagnosis <laughs> it's in your bible that means the devil can afflict a man the devil can bring a condition and from a physical standpoint you will find out that the condition is deteriorating jesus is saying let me give you perspective to that something may have happened that can translate into that worsening situation are we together jesus himself taught on the subject of deliverance jesus administered deliverance himself he didn't just teach he administered deliverance we'll look at a few scriptures luke chapter 8 from verse 26 please write it down luke chapter 8 the bible says they arrived at the country of the gatherings this was the story of the madman in gadara well since we've started let's just read it we're reading it's a long reading to 39 let's hurry up very quickly 
verse 27 now the bible says and when he went forth to land he met out of the city a certain man certain man means it was not a parable that man really existed are we together which had what which had you see the word devils there it means then that the word devil is not just the name of a person it's a generic description it's a character are we together he says that he met a certain man who had devils how long so we see from this scripture that demons can remain for a long time time does not drive demons and were not clothes neither abode in any house but in tombs when he saw jesus he cried out and fell and fell down before him and with a loud voice he said what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of the most high that means demons are intelligent did you see it there they call jesus by an accurate description of who he truly was there is intelligence with demons i beseech thee he said torment me not for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man for oft times it had caught him and it kept bound with chains and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters and he break the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness and jesus asked him saying what is thy name and he said legion this is an information because many devils were entered into him so the bible here reveals to us that multiple demonic spirits can coexist in a single human entity are we together now that it is not only one spirit per body as many demons as many as a legion these are very important information 31 and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep uh-huh and the bible says and there was a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain and they besought him that he should suffer them to enter into the swine that means it is not only human bodies demons can enter what else did they enter and he suffered them next verse let's hurry up the bible says and went out the devils out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd ran what violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked i'll show you why we're reading 34 and when they that fed them saw what was done they fled and went and told it to the city and in the country 35 then when they went out to see what was done everybody see that there are levels of deliverance now this man the spirit had left him is that true but see what else they found they came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed what was he doing sitting where at the feet of Jesus that is another level the demons had left him the man would have gone but the bible says his place of security was to sit at the feet of jesus and now something was happening to his mind in his right mind so the spirit leaving him was not all it took it took him staying with jesus and then sitting at the feet of jesus and as a result something was happening to his mind his mind was becoming right i think we can stop there luke chapter 9 from verse 37 jesus administered deliverance himself the bible says and it came to pass that on the next day when they were come down from the hill much people met him this is peter james and john the mount of transfiguration the bible says and behold a man of the company cried out saying master i beseech thee look upon my son for he is my only child look how wicked the devil is 
And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly cried out, and he teared him, and he foamed again, and bruising him hardly departed from him. And I besought your disciples to cast him out, and they could not. Everybody should be able, don't rush media, let's work together. Go to verse 40. Everybody should be able to cast out demons, but unfortunately, not everybody is able to cast out demons. Potentially, you would think everybody should be able to cast out demons based on the authority of scripture. But in experience, although these guys were the disciples of Jesus, we see that it takes more than just being with Jesus to have the ability to cast out demons. They were not rebels. They were people who were walking with Jesus. And yet the Bible says, I besought who? Thy disciples to cast him out. And they could not. Verse, we're reading to 43, 41. And Jesus answered it, said, O faithless and perverse generation. Jesus is telling us what was wrong now. How long shall I be with you? and permit you he says bring the son i love jesus ah that after this discussion that's what you will say too that when you go somewhere and they tell you our family everything you say bring bring that family i found something bring the son hither verse 42 and as he was yet coming the demons know who is who as he was yet coming before he came to meet jesus the bible says the devil threw him down and tear him and jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child two things happen one deliverance the other healing are you seeing that now so that man was not just he was not just demonized there were two conditions meaning that behind most sicknesses are spirits just ministering healing alone you may find out that your venture is frustrating most times in scripture you will see jesus casting out the spirit influence then releasing the power of god to correct the bodily deformity that that spirit caused are we learning now he rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father last verse and they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered every one at the things which Jesus did, you know, he said unto his disciples, all of this, um, this kind go ahead not, but by prayer and fasting. So we see that Jesus himself ministered deliverance. Is someone learning? Let's look at two more scriptures. Are you tired? Please don't be tired in the name of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 8. Let's start from verse 1 to 3. I just wrote a few here and it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the 12 were with him verse 2 the Bible says and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and healed of what evil spirits and infirmity and among them there was a woman called mary of magdala or mary magdalene how many demons came out of her the bible even will list it don't be afraid there is the imbalance part so you can trust me i'm a good pilot we will, will arrive safely in the name of jesus christ Out of whom seven went seven devils. Look at the advantage when people are delivered. Verse 3. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others, the Bible says, which ministered unto him of their. That means there are partners, there are helpers that the devil know that will stand with you and stand by you and this spirit will stop them it was on the strength of their deliverance if you are wondering where jesus got money from read your bible the bible is saying those women that have been impacted they have been delivered they went back and did whatever they did they had results and they returned back 
man of god this is the most this is the most scriptural way of funding for ministry that you change lives you impact people they go back they would not everybody will be too grateful to ignore you if people are really really changed seven demons out of this woman and she went back with her sound mind and she said no i will not forget the man that was used to save me and deliver me and the bible says they came and ministered to him when you are not changing lives and you want people to bless you in my opinion it's not sincere i can almost look at it as fraud in as much as you don't pay a man of god you can't pay for the anointing but i'm saying sincerely let me give you a secret spend your life blessing people not anticipating that you're blessing so that they will give you something let them have genuine results in their lives and leave them to surprise you it's cheaper than manipulation So if you, if you are finding out why Jesus and how Jesus became so blessed that he had a treasurer, it's not superstition. It was not every day they went to the river to get money out of the mouth of a fish. It would be a stupid way of thinking to believe that every day a fish will keep giving you coins. The classic way, that was a miracle to show something. The standard scriptural way of raising money for ministry is not, a, a fish will not be eating coin every day. It was just a you know what god is teaching in that scripture that there will be moments of supernatural intervention but that is not god's classic way of doing it god cannot be helping you by intervention every day intervention means a principle was violated and a consequence came from it now the mercy of god is coming to bridge so waiting by a seaside how did i get here waiting by a seaside for a fish so you squeeze that fish wouldn't the fish eat it was just used for a miracle impact people bless them sincerely let them encounter salvation healing let the word transform their minds let them go back with the word and produce results and i guarantee you the spirit of god who anointed you to bless them is the same spirit that will compel them to come back and bless you in fact let me say this let me say this respectfully to preachers and men of god building men is greater than building structures structures are fine don't get me wrong structures are great but let your structure not be finer than the men you are building a building can be destroyed government can bring a bulldozer in five minutes and collapse everything but you build men and the men will build the structure and if it falls they will build it again and if it falls they will build it again dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate kotos. Kate branda kata pa kotos koto pray kate kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.